In a flashback, Vivian has a conversation with her father. This isn't the Vivian that we see lying on her deathbed. It's five-year-old Vivian. However, on the stage, it's still that woman in a nightgown with a bald head and IV poles. So we can see that she's having the flashback. It's not just a flashback that's given to us. That might be quite different in the movie. Anyway, she's having this memory of reading the tales of the Flopsy Bunnies, which is probably appropriate for five-year-olds. And as she reads, she comes to a word that she doesn't know, soporific. It's actually a word that a lot of people don't know. Anyway, she asks her father what, it, what the word is, and he doesn't even lay down his newspaper. He just asks her to sound it out. Um, he doesn't even look at her or engage her. He makes her figure out um, how to say the word, and then he does tell her the meaning. But as she reads, she sees the connection between the word and the drawings that are in the text. And what we see is a woman who is excited by new words or learning things or new ideas. We can see in this five-year-old the woman that Vivian Baring will eventually come to be. Vivian appears at the hospital and she has fever and neutropenia. Um, I had to look that word up. It means that her she has some sort of infection and the chemotherapy that she has taken has destroyed her immune system, so even the slightest little infection could kill her. But she must ha also have some little infection that's doing wreaking havoc because she has a fever. And this is sort of, uh, she addresses the paradox of the fact that she has a fever and yet she feels like she's freezing, her teeth are chattering, she feels cold. She suggests to Jason that perhaps he should lower the dose. And Jason, of course, reacts, no way. She's tough. Um, Susie probably senses that um, Vivian is close to death. And so in while she's thinking that, she's trying to find some way of giving her some, easing some of her suffering. But without a doubt, she is suffering. In these final stages of her life, we're waiting for something to happen to her kidneys. If something happens to Vivian's kidneys, that will be the signal that this is almost all over. And the sign that something is wrong with your kidneys is when fluids come into your body, but they don't go out in the normal way. Vivian discusses the paradox of the situation that she's in. Her disease isn't what's killing her. It's actually the treatment she's receiving for her disease that is leading her perilously close to death. Vivian goes into isolation, and you'll see Kalikian and Jason putting on masks. The masks aren't to prevent them from getting diseases, it's to prevent them from giving her anything, because she's in a state right now where even the tiniest little cold could kill her. Um, I realize that this idea of masks and gowns and things like that is a little bit close to home, but in a, in a broader sense, you need to see that she's being physically isolated in a medical way, but it's in tune with her character. She has isolated herself for her whole life, um, and those two ideas are sort of paralleling now. In a scene of sort of mental escape, Vivian starts giving a lecture probably a lecture she's given many times before, over John Donne's Holy Sonnet number 5. It's the one that begins, If poisonous minerals and if that tree, uh, whose fruit doth death on us immortal us, and on all else immortal us. Um, she's talking about this poem, and she cites E.M. Ashford, and she cites Helen Gardner, but what she's doing is talking about the greatness of the intellectual capacity of John Donne. For me, the most important thing about the sonnet is how he is asking God to forget him. And instead of what we normally do in prayers, which is ask God to remember us. I think, and I think Vivian would agree with me, that the 
John Donne of this play is, well, the real John Donne also, feels unworthy of salvation. He's looking for it as if it's some sort of mystery instead of a, being a very simple gift from God. Um, the, in her lecture, she says, the speaker does not need to hide from God's judgment only to accept God's forgiveness. It's very sis simple, suspiciously simple. The flaw that John Donne has in his character is one of a lack of trust. And perhaps we can see that in Vivian's character also. The lecture continues and it says, we want to correct the speaker to remind him of the assurance of salvation, but it is too late. And so the message doesn't become one for the speaker of the poem, it becomes a message for us. Vivian begins to think about John Donne's holy sonnet, the one that begins, This is my play's last scene, here heaven's appoint, my pilgrimage's last mile, and my race, idly yet quickly run, hath in this last pace, my span's last in it, inch, my minute's last point, and gluttonous death will instantly unjoint my body and my soul. Vivian has completed her eight cycles of chemotherapy, and that probably was valuable research, but it didn't do anything to improve the quality or the length of Vivian's life. And she knows what, this, what Dunn believed when he wrote this poem, which is that she is now very close to death. She calls herself ultimately sick. Um, and she also realizes that the contribution that she's made doesn't really come from her mind. It comes physically from her body. She even says her ovaries. She tells us this in a, in, a, in a moment when she is breaking the fourth wall, but then she goes back to her conversation with Jason. Um, this is the most intimate conversation that she has with Jason. Physically, what Jason is doing is he's checking Vivian's chart. He keeps calling it the in and out chart or the I and O chart. He's looking for her kidneys to shut down, which would be something that will happen shortly before her death. Um, he's given her, he repeats the phrase hex and ven. Those are her chemotherapy drugs. I looked it up. Hex stands for, and this is the longest word I've ever said, hexamethophosphacyl and venplatin. They're chemotherapy drugs. And he knows that those drugs were going to eventually destroy her kidneys, um, but Vivian seems fairly tough. The, infinite, the intimate com conversation that they're having is about why Jason chose cancer as his field of study, his field of research. And you get the sense that Jason chose cancer for the same reason Vivian chose John Donne. It's something that is complex. It's something, it's the greatest thing that they could challenge themselves with. And yet in doing this, they've at the same time made themselves, um, uh, um, you know, separate from the rest of humanity in a way, in a way that's damaging. The question will become at the end of the play, if Jason can learn before his death what Vivian didn't learn until the last moments of her life.